I want now to talk about a third site where the question of human uniqueness seems to be an issue between Christian theology and scientific understandings. And that's the question of our relationship with other animals. The question about what differentiates humans from other animals is one with a very long philosophical and theological pedigree. The idea that human beings were the only animals with understanding seems to have been a commonplace of Greek philosophical thought, at least by the time of Aristotle in the 4th century BC. But there are no shortage of additional features supposed to be unique to human beings. Plato, the ancient Greek th philosopher, thought religiosity was unique to human beings. Hesiod uh, thought justice was uh, a human distinguishing uh, factor. Aristotle pointed to hair as uh, a unique human feature. He also uh, noted that appreciation of smells beyond that required for food uh, could be unique to human beings. Lactantius, uh, an early Christian theologian, thought spirituality and the use of fire was what differentiated humans from uh, other animals. Plato and others thought divinity or the image of divinity was uh, unique, the unique feature of human beings. Aristotle thought that the possession of ears that could not be moved was uh, another feature that distinguished human beings uh, from other animals. Many uh, Greeks and Romans pointed to the capacity to look up to the heavens rather than down to the earth. So this idea of uh, a spiritual capacity uh, again. Moving into the early modern period, Thomas Hobbes thought uh, the human proclivity to do willful hurt to one another uh, was a human uh, distinctive. Karl Marx said the universal production of goods was what distinguished human beings uh, from other animals. Uh, Friedrich Nietzsche said uh, that human beings were uniquely able to promise, assess value, exercise conscience and self-control, and display arrogance and vanity. Martin Heidegger said that human beings were uniquely able to form the world. Mark Twain thought human beings were uniquely avaricious, uh, uh, miserly, uh, cruel, and uniquely had the ability to blush. Noam Chomsky thought human beings uh, were the unique possessors of language, uh, and Richard Leakey thought human beings were unique in their symbol making. So you get a sense that this question about what makes human beings unique has been both a uh, very extended interest uh, for uh, human beings, but also the kinds of answers that have been supplied to that question about what is distinctive about human beings have been so various as to make us think, perhaps, uh, that they are all uh, suspect in one way or another. And this is a question for uh, modern science uh, as well as uh, traditions of philosophy, because we are uh, developing a better and better sense of the capacities of other animals. And so scientific knowledge, especially in relation to the cognitive capacities uh, of other animals, is putting into question many of the things that we've assumed could be relied on to distinguish human beings from uh, other animals. In the link below this video, you'll find a link to a couple of other videos which are absolutely fascinating in unsettling what we think we know about the difference between human beings and other animals. The first you'll see is a short video showing an experiment that was conducted in relation to a pair of New Caledonian crows. Now in the wild, these crows have been uh, exhibited to use sticks in order to fish out uh, ants. And researchers became interested in the crows uh, because they seemed to be uh, quite sophisticated in their use of tools. So they could find a stick of exactly the right length in order to uh, obtain uh, the ants that they wanted to uh, feed on. And so in laboratory conditions, the crows were presented with uh, a challenge. Uh, there was a long transparent tube uh, at the bottom of which there was a basket with a food reward in, uh, and the basket had a little handle that could be hooked with the right tool. And what the researchers did was put a series of tools uh, for the crows to select, uh, some of which didn't have a hook on, so wouldn't be useful, some of which were the wrong length, and then one tool that was the right length. And what they wanted to experiment with was to find out how good the crows were about selecting the right uh, tool. But in the video uh, that you'll see, uh, there was a problem. 
So the male crow, perhaps uh, having grown bored from being subjected to too many uh, uh, repeated experiments, uh, took the only suitable tool uh, uh, away and flew off to the other side of the enclosure. And so the female crow was left with a challenge of how to get the food out with no appropriate tool. But what you can see in the video is she reacts in an, in an astonishing way. After quickly assessing that none of the tools are appropriate, she picks up uh, a long piece of wire without a hook on the end, grabs it with her foot, and with a combination of the foot and her beak, she bends it into uh, a hook and then uses this refashioned tool in order to successfully obtain the food reward. Now, this is a remarkable video because for a long time, uh, people thought that tool making was uh, another of the things that could be uh, reliably uh, used to distinguish between human beings uh, and other uh, animals. Uh, well, first of all, tool use, uh, but then uh, tool making when it became apparent that lots of uh, other animals used tools in different ways. And now there's lots of research on all kinds of different species of animals uh, using uh, and making uh, tools. But we can see that even in species where we might not expect to find it, such uh, uh, as bird species, we can see the innovative use of tools to solve problems in order to uh, achieve uh, what the species want uh, to do in the world. So human beings, uh, even in relation to crows, are not unique in our use or even our fashioning uh, of tools. Now I'd like to move on to um, a second uh, example uh, that is very, very surprising in the relation to our understanding of the capacities of other animals. Uh, again, below this video, you'll find uh, two examples of, first of all, human beings and then chimpanzees uh, trying to uh, play a video game. Uh, perhaps you've uh, tried uh, brain training apps uh, on uh, your phone or uh, iPad. In this kind of brain training game, what was done was uh, on the computer screen, a number of digits was flashed up briefly on the screen, and then the digits were taken away, and instead, uh, where the digits were, there were empty boxes. And the game was to click on the empty boxes in numerical order. So this is a test first of symbolic recognition. Um, so the individual uh, engaging the game needed to know the order of uh, these numeric symbols. And then it's a test of memory. Uh, how quickly can you uh, remember a set of numeric symbols and then be able to click on them in order? What you see in the first video is a human being playing that game. And you might sympathize. As you watch the video, you can see the numbers uh, displayed very briefly uh, on the screen and then disappear into empty uh, boxes. And sometimes when the uh, human being is concentrating hard, uh, they can get uh, it right and click on the uh, symbols in the right order. Uh, and sometimes they can't. The symbols only, uh, the numbers only appear for a very short period and then they go away. And sometimes the uh, human being fails to uh, click on them in order. But in the second video, you can see uh, a chimpanzee playing that game. Now, not all the chimpanzees were very good at the game, but some individual chimpanzees were astonishingly good. And what the researchers found was, absolutely remarkably in my view, that uh, some of the chimpanzees were much better than any of the human volunteers. Again, let's take stock of what's going on here. The chimpanzees are learning a human symbolic system. They're learning that there's an order to the digits. And then they're able to uh, be trained in order to uh, uh, press on those digits after the numbers have been displayed for a very short period of time. So it turns out chimpanzees are better in their short term memory for human numbers than uh, humans are. So many of the ways in which the uh, Greeks and later philosophical uh, schools thought that human beings were unique seem to be challenged uh, at a very fundamental level by this kind of evidence of non-human animal uh, capacity. And so these kinds of uh, experiments and these kinds of scientific discoveries uh, seem to ask really profound questions about what exactly we think is the difference between human beings and other animals. So we've got tool uh, use and tool refashioning in New Caledonian crows in that first video. And in that second pair, we've got evidence that chimpanzees are really good at recognizing numbers and uh, remembering them. But you might be thinking, well, um, OK, so crows are quite good at bending wire uh, and solving problems that way. And chimpanzees are, turn out to be quite good uh, at remembering numbers. But there are other things that definitely only human beings can do. You might think, well, 
We've got no good evidence that any non-human animal has ever written a novel, uh, for example, or we've got no good evidence that non-human animals uh, can perform abstract calculus. Uh, and that's probably true, um, although you know, we, perhaps we'll find out in some uh, future uh, of uh, some novel writing uh, dolphin or uh, uh, gorilla. But it's probably true that those things are unique to human beings. But what's interesting is that they're not uh, properties that are true of all human beings. So if we're looking for the kind of distinction that that grand philosophical distinction was looking for, some kind of one uh, marker factor that could be used to reliably distinguish between human beings and every kind of animal, examples like abstract calculus or novel writing are not going to do the job because some human beings uh, and only human beings will be on one side of the line, but uh, the vast majority of human beings alongside uh, all of non-human animals are going to be on the other. And it turns out that it's very hard to work out any particular characteristic that would reliably distinguish between humans uh, and uh, other animals. So we might need to think in a much more complex way about how human beings uh, and other animals uh, relate. We might have to give up on idea that there is one particular marker that we could use to reliably distinguish between human beings and other animals.